Okay, guys, let's gather in. Dan, we play our music. I got to do some corrective training here, guys. Thank you. Okay, let's gather in, guys. Dan is going to play our theme song here. Throughout the weekend, I need you to pay attention. Anytime this song is played, it's the call sign. It's the come back home sign. Okay, this is your mom coming out the back door and yelling across the neighborhood. So, Dan, cue the music. When banks say you no, know, call, call, go. Investors in the know, call, call, go. Yes, everybody knows about call. So, by the end of this weekend, you guys will be singing this to yourself. I promise you. You already are. Okay? This is the call sign. So, anytime we go on break, you'll hear the, you'll hear the music blasting. That's the call sign to come back in, okay? Um, okay, we're going to spend here about an hour or so, probably a little bit less even than an hour, in our seats again, and then we're going to break into the hedge fund roundtable. Who's been to a funding tour before? Just so I know which snakes to watch out for. <laughs> you haven't, so you haven't done the hedge fund roundtable? Okay, so only one person. Roland, you're the only one. Anybody else? Okay, Roland. I'll be the judge. I'm watching you. Okay. Um, okay, so that was one housekeeping item. The song, guys. Just remember, anytime you hear that, that's your call sign to come back in. Another housekeeping item. Um, we're going to pass these out. Your phones are off right now, of course, right? Yeah, right. You didn't all turn your phones off. Don't joke me. You just put them on vibrate. I know. Um, see, I told you. That's uh, not off. Okay. So uh, do not do it right now. Do not do it during this exercise. But tonight, if you need help, catch one of us to help you do this. But I want all of you to download all of these apps onto your phone in preparation for tomorrow. Okay. Okay. If you don't have a smartphone, you can't download the app. Simple as that. If you do have a smartphone, I want you to download each of these apps, okay? So can somebody come pass these? Aaron, can I task you with that? We pass these down each aisle. Okay. Um, do not do that right now, please. Just put it in your binder, out of sight, out of mind. Don't worry about it. You don't need it today, but you're going you're gonna to want it tomorrow morning, okay? Um, okay. So... Let's talk real quick about understanding credit. And when I say credit, we're not only referring or referencing here credit score. We're not only referring to going to the bank and getting a line of credit. Credit in general. Okay, There's some key things you have to understand about credit. Um, so let's talk about this. First of all, in your books, um, if you will turn to, and unfortunately, for some reason, these books did not get the page numbers printed in them. But it's about, I would guess, 20 some odd pages in, you will see a page that looks like this. Creating and sustaining credit. You're almost there. Keep scrolling past those slides. You're there. Okay, so let's talk about this really quick. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. Can I get a mic, Dave or Bernie? Francis, do you have any fear of reading out loud? No. Okay, will you read for me like the first half of that page? Yeah. Starting with, starting with uh, what is, read the whole paragraph, what is a credit score? Yes, you, the mics are now no longer going to shock you. You can hold it. Test. We changed the battery. I don't need a mic, but I'm. <laughs> no, you need a mic. A credit score is a sum used by lenders as an indicator of how likely you are to repay your loans. Your credit score is generated by a mathematical formula utilizing the data from your credit reports. Lenders have been using credit scores as part of the lending decision for more than 40 years. What factors influence my credit score? 
Various factors determine your credit score, including the following, payment history, outstanding debt, length of credit history, severity and frequency of derogatory credit information, such as bankruptcies, charge-offs, and collections, the amount of credit used compared to the amount of credit available. When we go on? Nope. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. What have we learned about credit, just from that section? It really is just a mathematical formula, right? Yeah. It really is. Nobody, I've, I've met lots of people, and I'm sure there's going to be a few of you in the room that are going to try and tell me that you're that person too. Lots of people seem to be or think that they're experts on credit. I've yet to meet somebody who really, truly can understand the entire system. But the bottom line is this. Credit is, is actually one of these things where you use it or you lose it. Okay? You have to use your credit in order for your credit to, to improve. Um, but there's rules in place also of using it properly. Okay? So the re why are we talking about this here? Are we a credit-based lender? Are we a credit-based lender? Nasheed, if you want to do a loan through us, do we have to look at your credit report? No. No. We do not even have to look at your credit report. We are not a credit-based lender. Now, if you would like better rates, we can look at your credit report, and that can help us sway our lender committee and our lenders in favor of giving you better terms. Okay? So credit can be a boost to you, can help you, even with our loans. But if you don't want us to look at your credit, we don't care if you got a 100 credit score. We'll give you a loan. Don't care. Why? Because we're only going to lend you money on a good deal. Okay? So, so, but you still need to understand this, because you need to build yourself towards improving and boosting your credit. So um, who's got? Denise. Will you start right there? How does my credit score affect me? And read down through just the bottom of the page. Okay. How does my credit score affect me? Your credit score in an important, is an important indicator of your financial health. Lenders use your credit score to determine whether or not you are a good candidate for a loan, what type of interest rate you will pay. While your credit score is key is a key determinant of your credit worthiness, lenders also examine the information on your credit report and your loan application. Okay. Um, so that kind of touches on same same reasons for us. Why would we use a credit report? Well, we can give you better, we can give you beneficial treatment. Um, next page. And we're going to skip the top paragraph. I'm just going to have you, uh, Lisa, will you please read, how do I improve my credit score? These common guidelines and practices will generally help you raise your credit score. Be punctual, pay all your bills on time, lateness, collections, and bankruptcies have the greatest negative impact on your credit score. Check your credit report regularly and take the necessary steps to dispute inaccuracies. Don't let your credit health suffer due to inaccurate information. Watch your debt. Keep your account balances below 75% of your available credit. For instance, if you have a credit card worth a with a $1,000 limit, you should try to keep the balance owed below 750. Avoid quick credit fixes. A good credit score is, is created over time and reflects a number of interrelated factors and avoid excessive inquiries. Okay, so that touches on the use it or lose it, right? Um, how many of you believe that credit cards are a good thing? Okay. They can be, right? How many of you believe credit cards are a bad thing? What if I told you that American Express last year gave me free for my use for my rehabs on my projects over $300,000 last year? Free for my use. I ran over $300,000 through my American Express last year for rehabs. How much interest did I pay on that $300,000? Exactly $0. That's a lot of free money, right? Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Not because I paid it off early. They don't want me to pay it off early. 
Not because of my good credit. I mean, yes, I had to have good credit in order to do that. Okay? But why would they give me $300,000 in free money? Let's think about this for just a second, guys. If I had gone to a hard money lender and said, I want to borrow $300,000 to use as a revolving line for the next year, what would I have paid? Let's say if I paid, let's say if I paid three points on $300,000 and 12% interest. Well, three points on 300,000, that's nine grand. 12% interest, what's that? 36 grand. That's $45,000 in money saved that American Express just said, here you go, Regan, you can have it. Why? It's because they're hoping that I don't pay it every month, right? That's where they make their money. Well, they make their money in transaction charges. So every time I went and bought $2,000 worth of stuff at Home Depot, they got paid on the merchant account, right? But then, secondly, they were hoping that I was not going to pay that bill at the end of the month and they were going to assess me a bunch of interest, right? So do you see how credit can be our friend? So here's a contest. Who likes contests? Seriously? You guys are like, the, you guys are putting me to sleep up here. Am I really that boring? Okay. Well, thank you, Camille. I'll lay down and take a nap until you guys are ready. Let's talk here. Um, everybody turn your page in your book to the script. We're going to have a contest. Winner will be announced tomorrow afternoon. So this is not something you need to do right now either. Winner will be announced tomorrow afternoon for the person who raises their credit limit the most as well as decreases their interest rate the most. Why would we do this? How much did American Express let me use of their money for free last year, guys? $300,000 for free. How much did I save by not paying a hard money lender that money? $45,000. If I can teach you how to put $45,000 in your pocket over the next 12 months in the next 12 minutes, are you okay with that? Okay. Whew. I thought people were going to say no to that question. Okay, so let's talk about this. Here's the script you're going to use. You're going to stick to the script, okay? So you're going to pull out your credit card. On the back of your credit card in your wallet, Here's my American Express that they so kindly let me get all those miles on. There's a phone number on the back of it, okay? You're going to call that phone number. And you're going to say, Hi, this is Regan Richmond. How are you today? I'm calling to find out what my current credit limit is. Well, Mr. Richmond, your current credit limit is $25,000. Or whatever yours is, okay? Hmm... I'm about to make a significant purchase, and I would like to increase my current limit today. And don't say a word. You can cross out where it says right there, don't say another word. Cross that out in your script, and in big, bold, highlighted letters, zip your lips. <laughs> Shut it. Don't say anything. Okay? How many of you heard in negotiation the first one to name something loses? Yes. You're negotiating here, okay? So how much can you raise my current limit today? Or no, sorry. And would like you to increase my current limit today. And then you be quiet. You don't say anything until they say something. I don't care if it's five seconds or five minutes. Okay? They're going to say, well, how much would you like? Well, how much can you give me? Well, how much do you need? How much are you authorized to give me? And shut your mouth. Write it again right there, okay? Write it in right there. How much are you authorized to give me? And shut your mouth. Do not name a number. Any questions? Do not name a number. Operator, I am authorized to give you, and they're probably going to say something very minimal, like $500 or $1,000. Okay? They're not going to say very much. I'm authorized to give you a thousand dollars. Hmm. Well, that is not enough, but I'll take that for now. I would like to speak to your supervisor at the end of this conversation today. 
In the meantime, what's my current interest rate? Pause. What did we just do right there? I subtly let them know that I'm speaking to their supervisor after this call, and that conversation will either reflect good or bad upon them, right? Mm -hmm. So I've planted that in their mind. Now, the intent of that is not that we're going to call their supervisor and tell them that they were a horrible employee. Right. The intent of that is what? Get the best customer service and the best, most help we can possibly get, okay? So you mention it in passing, and then you go to the next question. In the meantime, what's my current interest, interest rate? Your current interest rate is 18%. Anybody have higher than that? Probably. Probably. Okay. Your current interest rate is 18%. Hmm. Well, I would like for you to lower my interest rate today, please. And what do you write right there? Zip your lips. Zip your lips. Shut up. Okay. What's the... Oh, and then they, they're going to say, okay. What's the annual fee I'm currently paying? Okay, I have an American Express. Who else has American Express? What's your annual fee? What do you think I paid last year? I didn't pay anything. Why? Well, they see that I'm running $300,000 through my account annually. Are they making a little bit of money off of me, even if I don't pay any interest or any fees? Yes. Okay. They'll be happy to waive that annual fee for you. Okay. Even if you're not running $300,000 through your card, even if you're running $300 a year, they don't make their money on the annual fees, they make their money on the merchants and the interest, okay? Operator says, okay. Uh, student says, what was the interest, or sorry, was the interest rate you just quoted and the annual fee that you just waived retroactive to six months ago? And they're gonna say, probably no, right? Our script says yes. Let's be honest, they're not going to be as big of pushovers as our script. They're probably going to say no, and so you're going to say, well, let's make it that way. Will they do that? Yeah, they might. They might not, but they might. Are you ever going to get anything you don't ask for? Never. Okay? And you're saying all of this in confidence, of course. You're not saying this in a, I know you're not going to do this for me, but I have to ask because Regan told me he'd not let me back in the room, okay? <laughs> Student, great, please make sure to credit my account the difference. The operator says, okay. Student says, great, thanks for all of your help and time. Now can you please transfer me to your supervisor? And then rinse and repeat, okay? Everybody good with that? Why are we doing that? If American Express is willing to let me use $300,000 of their money for free annually, do you think I could do a couple of projects using that money? Okay. I bought a house three weeks ago in Tooele, Utah. It's about 45 minutes from where I live for $25,000. Whose money do you think I used? I got a credit advance on my American Express. Okay, I'm buying a house three weeks from now. No, sorry, two weeks from now on the 30th of this month. I'm buying a house for $56,000. Now, I'm not using American Express to buy that one, but all of my rehab costs will be done on my American Express. Okay, so it's a huge tool you guys can have. That frees up a ton of money and ability to you. Already at the breaks, I've had a couple of people approach me on how can I find some seed money to get started? That's, that's as expensive as credit cards can be. If you use them right, they can be a huge tool and a huge asset to you, okay? So. so, so again, was that the business side or the uh, Mine is personally secured. It has my business name on it, but it's all guaranteed personally by me. It's not attached to my EIN. It's attached to my social. Does that make sense? That, was that your question? Yeah. Well, so. I, question. Um, I only have secured credit cards, so this wouldn't apply to me. Uh, well, this wouldn't apply as a secured card, but perhaps you can get them to give you an unsecured line now. How long have you had it as a secured card? Uh, maybe about a year. Okay. So, and you've performed? Yeah. You've got a year of good history with them now. Ask them to give you some unsecured line now. Do you guys understand that question? Everybody knows what a secured card is? 
So you go and you say, I have to pony up $500 in order for you to give me a $500 line of credit, okay? Because they're viewing you as a higher credit risk, so they're making you put up the collateral up front. Well, once you've performed on that for some time, you've built credibility with them, okay? You've built what we call in our business, reputational capital, okay? So even if it's only with that one company, even if a credit score is still in the dumps, but you've built reputational company, capital with that company, you now have the ability to go to them and get additional terms. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. So that is the contest. Dan, you can take that off. Uh, that is the contest. Um, $3,000 reward for the winner of the contest tomorrow. Okay? In your books now, we're going to dive into the hedge fund roundtable. This is, this is fun, guys. You guys are going to enjoy this. I do need two mics again, please. So turn your page to this sheet here. We've, we will get page numbers on these next time you come. Welcome to the Hedge Fund Roundtable. Now, everybody please pay attention because we're going to answer a lot of questions in the next 10 minutes going over this. And it's, got, and it's going to be a little bit confusing. I'll let you ask questions at the end. I'll give explanation. But you need to understand these guidelines for the exercise, OK? Um, just go ahead and bring, who read? Francis, you read, and Aaron. Oh, no, Denise. Just, just bring the mics up to the second row. Have Ken and Angel start us. Is, am I, I'm not pronouncing that right. Yeah, you are. I am? But I'd rather not read because um, I have poor vision. OK, give it to Yvette. That's fine. Okay, Ken, you're going to start right where it says instructions, and then Yvette, you're going to read paragraph two, and then Craig, you're going to read as the fund manager. Okay, and we're going to pass. We're going to go back and side, back and forth, both sides of the room, and go right through this. The hedge fund roundtable was created to give all participants an understanding of the daily challenges that hedge funds face to raise, deploy, and properly manage capital to achieve maximum yield. Within your rep respective groups, you will be issued a sum of money that you must manage and deploy for your investors to maximize your yield and theirs. You must do this while mitigating risk, i.e. investing in files that are clean, well secured, well positioned for upside, and extremely profitable. Remember the risk reward formula. Okay, so you guys are going to be acting as what we act as. You're going to be in charge of managing funds and deploying funds out on loans and producing a profit to your lenders. We, as a panel of lenders, will then sit back in the back and critique the files that you present to us that you deployed our money into. So your job is to make that profitable. Okay, keep going. Next. You have raised capital under the following representation to your investors. You give them a 9% return on every dollar they invest before you earn a dime. Any proceeds above 9% will be split in half. 50% of the increase will go to the investor. 50% of the increase above 9% will go to the hedge fund manager. This is where your team potentially gets paid. Okay, so do you guys understand that? Whatever you make on your fund... So if you have $5 million or $10 million, you, you should all have at least $10 million to invest in your funds or whatever you decide, okay? If you have $10 million to invest, that's our money that we're giving you to invest into these files. The first 9% that you earn, you owe it to us. When do you break a profit? When you hit 9.000001. And that point zero 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 one is going to be split amongst your, well, excuse me, it's first going to be split 50-50. We're going to get 50% of that as well. You're going to get the other 50%, and that's going to be split amongst your team members. Does this sound like a profitable exercise? Yeah. This is how Kogo makes money. Okay? We use other people's money to lend on deals, and, and we make a portion of the profit. Okay, next. If you, 
If you invest $1 million into 10 different deals of $100,000 each, charging 5 points and 15% interest for a period of one year, you have, in essence, assuming no defaults, slow pays or early payoffs, locked up a 20% yield on your investors' million dollars. With the first nine going to your investors, you now have 11% left to split amongst with your team and your investors. And that's a typo. So right next to that paragraph, that 11% is going to be split 50-50 also. Okay. So 9% goes to the investor. Now you've got 11% left over, which is split 50-50. You guys, the team will make 5.5, and, and the investor makes 5.5 of that. Yes? How do you uh, differentiate the <coughs> return Let, from the yield? Let me you pause you. If, this, <coughs> if these questions are not answered by the end of the instructions, then I'll answer questions, okay? Okay, next paragraph. This means your investors have earned their 9% plus 5.5%. Half of 11% is 5.5%. For a total return to your investors of 14.5% or $145,000, not too shabby. That's a Northwestern term in case you were wondering. <laughs> Okay, keep going. As a fund manager, you have earned 5.5% on $1 million or $55,000. If you have 10 or more executives in your fund, you have each effectively earned $5,500 for the entire year. Does that make sense? Okay, next. Now ask yourself this question. Was this a high enough return for you personally? Was this enough for the other executives in your, in your fund? If the answer to this question is no, well, what could you do to increase your yield, thereby increasing your annualized income as a hedge fund, as a hedge fund manager? So go ahead, and read, go ahead and read to the end of the page, Gloria. Number one, raise your money. Number two, deploy your capital into shorter term loans allowing you to roll the money more often this concept is known as the velocity of money number three charge higher points and in interest without pricing yourself out of the market and losing market share to your competition number four reduce the number of partners in your fund not an option for this example and some white paper a marker and some white paper. Uh, go ahead and read number five too, Gloria. Number five, invest in higher risk assets where you can charge higher fees and interest, thereby increasing your potential return. Okay, so before we go to the next paragraph, let's touch on some of these real quick. This is going to be a delicate balancing act, just like we play, between safe yields, sufficient yields, and too high of risk yields. Do you see where I'm saying there's a, there's a wide range there? Safe is putting it in the bank and making 0.2% in a CD, right? Is it going anywhere? It's going nowhere in all, in all definitions of that term, right? It's going nowhere. Okay. Effective is you get good returns on your money with a low enough default rate or loss rate that the profits are sufficient. And too high of risk is you lost your money because you invested into stupid products or, or investments, right? Okay, so it's going to be a balancing act. Okay, next paragraph. Mike. Each group will receive a stack of files from the Corporate Office of Secured Investment Corp and Private Money Exchange. Some of these files state that they were unfunded, others state that they were dead, others state that they are missing information. Regardless of what you read in the file, please disregard all of this information and come, come to your own conclusions as the fund committee. Okay. Keep going. As this is a fictional exercise, you have the right to manufacture details of each scenario when you determine that key points of a file are missing. Use your imagination to come up with scenarios that will make the file a win for you 
and your fun without going crazy. That being said, you cannot make up the location or value of the property, the amount of money that the borrower was requesting, and the amount of money that the borrower is putting down. Some files show, will show the borrower bringing zero dollars to the closing table. It will be at the discretion of the individual funds to decide if they will fund these types of deals. With that in mind, understand that a lack of down payment from the borrower greatly increases the risk associated with the file and could harm your chances of winning the grand prize. Okay, next. Items such as the points you will, ch um, sorry, <laughs> you will charge the interest you will charge and the length of the term you will write the note at are all completely up to you. The managers of the fund, for each file that you decide to, you decide to fund, you will fill out the corresponding loan summary sheet with the property address, the value, the amount that you will lend, the down payment or cross um, collateral collateralization the borrower um, is bringing to the table the point you will charge the interest you will charge and the length of the overall term okay pause before we go to the next paragraph so if you turn about f uh, four pages back in your book you will see some some sheets some worksheets the first one says HUDs fund asset review sheet that's so skip past that one for a second the next one says loan summary sheet that's what you were just reading about referencing. You'll fill out a loan summary sheet on every single file that you as a team decide to fund. Okay, if you don't fund the loan, you, don't, you won't fill out the sheet on it. You'll fill out a sheet on every deal that you fund. Does that make sense? So each of you within your teams, you will need to fill out these worksheets on the loans that you're going through. Okay, and we'll walk through the sheet in just a minute. I'm sorry, did I say backward? Yes. Uh, flip forward about four pages in the book and you'll see a whole bunch of them. Okay. Okay, where are we at with the mic? Eldoris. Annualized interest. When you fund a deal for less than 12 months and you charge five points and 50% entrance, you must remember that the interest is annualized for the entire calendar year. Points can be charged twice because the length of the loan will only be six months. The interest rate extends over all of the months. In this scenario, you would only be earning six months of 15% annualized interest or 1.25% per month. This, this means you earn five points on the loan origination and half of 15% interest for six months. Five plus 7.5 is 12.5% annualized return on a six month loan. These figures can get confusing, so to simplify this process, we will assume that loans written in this exercise only for less than 12 months will carry the same points and interest for the entire year. Okay, so Dan, go to my Elmo for just a second. Did you guys understand that? I can assure you based on the experience of this exercise that 90% of you did not. So let me see if I can help you understand it better. If a loan is written at five points, can you guys read my chicken scratching? five points and 15% for six months. How many times does six months We good? How many times does six months happen in a year? happens twice, right? So if we wrote this loan, we're only going to write it one time, but we're going to we're going to calculate it as if it's a full year of use of the money, okay? So if 6 months happens twice in a year, how many times are we going to get 5 points? Let me back up. 
Do you guys understand what points are? Points are paid regardless of length of the loan. Points is the origination charge. So you get the points the day the loan funds. It doesn't matter if they keep that loan for one day or 12 years. Points are paid up front. Interest, so in this scenario, 15% interest, that's used over a year, okay? So back to the example, if it's a six month loan, how many times over a year are you going to get five points? Twice, okay? How many times over that loan are you going to get five points? Once, you're gonna get five points or 5%, so five points equals 5%, okay? You're gonna get 5% guaranteed. The 15%, when will you get that? It's paid out in monthly payments, and you only get the full 15% if it goes a full year. What if it only goes six months, which is what the loan is written for? You're gonna get seven and a half percent, plus you're gonna get five points. So over a year, this six month loan is done twice, which means you're going to get 10 points, but you're only gonna get 15%. Is there any questions on that? Don't be ashamed. If there's a question, ask it. Yvette. I'm sorry. I'm a dude. I was only. I can only focus on one thing. Say it one more time. If we only do it one time, yeah, we'll okay. have five points and we we'll have fifteen percent for now, the if exercise. We, if we do it twice, though, then we'll have ten points and fifteen percent over the total year. Yes. Mm -hmm. You only, if you only do it one, if it only goes six months, mm -hmm. it's only going to get five points one time, automatically, oh, okay. and it's only going to get half of the fifteen percent because fifteen percent is an annual figure. Okay. And so, so you if you only use it half the year, you're only paying half that interest. Okay. So you okay? couldn't like split up a so one year thing. Let me let me answer your question further. I think we'll add more clarity. Okay. For this exercise, for this group, okay. All loans are going to be figured as if it was, as if the money was deployed at those terms for a full year. Okay. So in other words, this loan, mm -hmm. you're going to just you're just going to assume that we wrote this loan exactly again a second time that year. Okay. Okay. So this loan gave us an annual yield of fifteen percent twenty-five. Okay. This loan gives us an annual yield of twenty-five. Oh, okay. Because five points. Because five, five points is going to happen twice in twelve so if months. It happens twice, then and fifteen percent is only going to happen once in twelve months. So we add those together. That's an annual yield. Even if we only hold it for six months. Even if we, well, if we hold it, if we hold it six months, it's going to give us an annual yield of twenty-five percent. Okay. Because we calculate in the points twice. We're assuming that it's going to be redeployed at the exact same terms. Okay? okay so, that's, that's so the high. annual yield that that gives you is 25%. Oh, well, let's, let's, let's read on and see if it answers your question better, okay? But that's the first piece that you need to understand. Agree with it or not, that's the rules of the game. Well, you'll, you'll understand it better in a minute, Francis, okay? Okay, example number two. A loan written at five points, okay, and 15% again, uh, but it's only for three months. Okay, it's only for three months. How many times does this happen in a year? Four, four right, so this is a quarter, we're going to get that four times. So four times five equals 20. So we're going to get 20 points over the year. How much interest, how much percentage of interest are we going to get? We're going to get 15 over a year. We're going to get 15. Okay, so we're going to have 20 plus 15. What's our annual yield? 
This is a 35 yield, 35% and to annual percentage yield. I'm getting some blank stares. Why don't, why don't we split that 15%? Because, you're too much because, because this is, because that's what it, that's what it returns you annually. Everything that we care about here is annual yield. Even if it only goes for three months? Mm -hmm. You're going to assume that you wrote that exact same loan four more times. Okay. Who just walked out to answer a phone call in the middle of this? Who was that sitting right there? When he comes back in, whoever that was, is going to have a rough time in this exercise. So I apologize to whoever's team he's on. You're going to have to bring him up to speed. Okay. Go down to transactional funding. Where are we at with the mic? Anthony. Based, based on the above numbers, the immediate reasonings would be to write all of your loans for a three-month period of time. The challenge with this strategy is to fund enough three-month loans with proper loan-to-value to minimize risk and uh, proper borrowers who have the financial credentials to make the monthly payments as well as the costs associated with generating the volume of business that this strategy would require. As a result, it is not advisable to only focus on short-term loans, also known as transactional funding. Go ahead and read the, um, just down to that next heading, down to a balanced portfolio, if you would, Anthony. Short-term notes, highly labor-intensive, and uh, the return on the investment of the time must be part of your yield calculations and, and, uh, and uh, analyze. Analysis. Analysis. Think of the due diligence, paperwork, the notes, the deed of trust, the insurance tracking, the tax payments tracking, the record fees, the processing monitoring, and the title insurance and escrow tracking that would be required on every single submission, knowing only 5% of the files will actually uh, be good enough to fund. Although this strategy may produce a high yield, your increased yield would be eaten alive through operational and overhead costs associated with this strategy. Okay, so let me explain that a little deeper. In this last example we gave, we got a 35% annual percentage yield. That's a 35% rate of return on our money. Can everybody agree that's pretty good? Okay, but if you caught that, it was kind of just mentioned in passing there. We only end up funding, and this is probably high, we only end up funding about 5% of all files that get submitted to us. Does that surprise you? That's why you guys are here. It's because we need you to understand better how to submit a good file to us. Because we spend all that time and effort and due diligence, and you spend all that emotional energy to submit all those files, and only 5% of them come through eligible for funding for various reasons. Does that shock you a little bit? That's a lot of work, right? So if we're going through 95 files to throw in the garbage can in order to fund five out of 100, do we want to be writing those loans for only three months at a time and, doing all, and having to do all that work that many more times? So it's a delicate balance. Even though this looks like a 35% annual percentage yield, with all the cost of overhead, that gobbles it up pretty quick. So if we can deploy that money and have it continue to churn out this 15%, as opposed to just getting this five points, if this pays off every three months, what do we get of this? 15 divided by four is three and two thirds, right? Three and three quarters, yeah. So 3.75, wouldn't we rather have this continue to pay us 15% as opposed to only get three and three quarters out of it? So that's a delicate balance you've got to look at, okay? So as fund managers, same thing. You've got to look at that too. Okay, keep going. Uh, where are we at? With a balanced portfolio includes... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Just a balanced portfolio. Where's the mic? Did it get passed forward instead of back? If you'll go ahead and pass it back, Charles. Charles. 
a balance a balanced portfolio is the best strategy to have a, a balanced uh, portfolio for the, the amount of the money that you have to deploy. Too much cash in the bank reduces your overall return. Idle funds are incredibly incredibly expensive. All, also, avoiding writing of all your loans for the same period of time. If you deploy all your funds in the trust, all your funds in the first month, and write all of your notes for the 12 months, you will have nothing to work work with for the next 12 months. You you will also receive a glutton of money back all at once, which puts a strain on your operation to get the money re redeployed. Okay, so now this kind of contradicts with the discussion I had just a second ago, right? We don't want everything to be three months. We also don't want everything to be 12 months because we don't, we don't want to all of a sudden be sitting on $10 million in our bank account to which you guys owe me 9%, right? You've got to have constant flow and constant movement in that fund that you're managing. Is that accurate in the fund that you manage? Is it Kai? Kai? Was that right? Oh, I wasn't even close. Mai, I'm sorry. Is that accurate in fund management? Yes, yes. Is it a lot of work? Do you put just as much effort into underwriting the files you don't fund as opposed to the ones that you do? So, okay, uh, a balanced portfolio includes, where are we at with the mic? Yeah. <clears throat> a balanced portfolio includes, one, the assets that you fund, your fund invests in, <laughs> two, the area your fund, your fund invests in, too much concentration in one area can potentially increase risk, three, the origination fee that you charge and the reason you charge that amount Four, the interest rate that you charge and the reason you charge that amount. Five, the length, the length of, the, of the term of each loan. Did you structure your portfolio to have loans going out and coming back at varied times so you have a consistency of funds? Too much at one end or too little at the other. Taxes you are supposed to have all along the way. A niche, asset type, location, income property versus fix and flip, commercial versus residential, non-owner occupied. Seven, the target yield for your fund. Eight, the amount the fund needs to earn on each deal it chooses to get involved in. Okay. Any questions there? Good. Okay, Mike, if you'll read to the, through the bottom of that page to just before at exactly 60 minutes on the next page. All right. Each group will have exactly 75 <coughs> minutes to review the funding opportunities that exist in the files in front of you. You must determine as a group which files you will fund, why you will fund them, how much you will charge, and the length of the terms. Upon deciding all these things, you will fill out the corresponding loan summary sheet for each deal you fund. Let me stop you for one second. One quick point there. So in the notes before that and what Mike just read, if you are funding residential investment properties, homes that investors like yourselves are going to flip, and you want to charge, because you now understand the game here of maximizing your annual yield, so you want to charge eight points and 18% on all of your files, are you going to fund a lot of deals? No, okay. In this exercise, you have free reign. You can make up anything you want, okay? So you can, you can present to us as a panel that you charge 20 points and 50% interest on all your files and your yields were, were unbelievable. Well, as a fund manager, I mean, as, as, the, as the fund seeder that gave you the capital, we're not going to believe that your yields were attainable and we're going to turn you down as the fund that we're going to invest in. Does that make sense? So you have to keep that in balance because you're going to present to us at the end, you're going to present to our panel our family of billionaires that's lending you this money for your fund, you're going to have to present to us of why we should be willing to give you more money to, to seed your fund for the next year. Does that make sense? Okay, keep going, Mike. 
In the event that you have more money to deploy than files, you can go to another group and ask them for access to their discarded stack of deals. Groups are not allowed to negotiate any compensation or fees for these deals. We assume that you all are very nice people, not snakes or sharks, and you will allow other groups to take these discarded files. No fussing or whining allowed. Groups can take as many discarded files as they need from as many groups as necessary to get all their funds deployed. Remember, the more cash you have to deploy, the more deals you can be involved in. Failure to deploy all the capital raised will affect your overall portfolio yield. Idle funds are expensive funds. Okay, so when you guys come back in the room, we're going to go to break here in a few minutes. When you guys come back in the room, there's going to be stacks literally this high of files stacked across the stage. We'll split you up into teams. Each of your teams will come forward and you'll, when we assign, when we tell you, you'll come forward and you'll grab your stack of files, okay? Those files are, every one of those is a submission that we have received. Somebody wanted to borrow money on this project. We may have or we may not have funded these files that you're going to have. You're going to determine that for yourself. You're going to look through it. There's going to be missing information. This gave you carte blanche to make up that information. But you also have to be prepared to defend it. Okay? And we're going to quiz you on that. But you have, so you're going to go through them and you're going to say, this one's fundable? Yes. And here's what we're going to fund it at. And, and you're, going to, you're going to balance that. The next one, you're going to say, no, this one's not fundable. And why? If, if you as your team have decided a, a deal is not fundable, you're going to discard it on the side of the table on the floor next to you, and that's free reign to the other groups to come and get. Because I can already tell you what some of you are going to find is, is that you don't think there's enough files for you to fund in your stack, and others of you are going to fund every single deal. Okay? So if you don't fund it, it goes on the floor, other teams have access to it. Does that make sense? Now, funds that you don't deploy, you still owe us 9% on that money. Okay? So if you have $20 million available to you and you only deploy $10 million, well, we're owed 9% on 20. Does that make sense? So you've got to work towards deploying all of your capital that you accept. Okay? Okay, next. We're getting close. Who's got the mic on this side? Tammy, if you will read uh, to the bottom of that page, please. Oh, Mike, Dan. Grab the one from Mike on the other side. His was working. Yeah, those 12 volt batteries suck, don't they? <laughs> Are they both dead? Okay, Tammy, just be loud. I'll, I'll do this one. Important note, you guys need to all understand this. If you're asked a question that you do not know the answer to, you cannot answer, I don't know. Be prepared to make up an answer on the spot to the best of your ability. Remembering that you're being judged on all aspects of your portfolio presentation. 
present, present a very convincing argument when asked specific questions. How many of you are politicians? Well, you're about to learn. Okay? So you've got to be politicians when you stand up and present this stuff. If you don't know the answer, you better figure out real quick and present it in a way that was well rehearsed. Okay? Uh, where's the mic at? What? Yes, so each group will have one presenter, yes. Uh, okay, and, okay, Nathan, if you will read down through the bottom, please, starting, up, starting at upon completion. Upon completion of this presentation, each group will turn in their hedge fund asset review sheet. Groups will then take a 15-minute break, during which time the pan panel will deliberate and decide, in ascending order, the teams that did the worst to the best. The final winning team will be announced. Upon the announcement of the winner, all other groups will give them a standing ovation. The scores for Chariots of Fire will play as they walk to the front of the room and claim their coveted reward. They will have their picture taken with the executives of the company who invested millions of dollars into their fund. Upon completion of these ceremonies, groups will return their files to the front of the stage, resituate their tables to a classroom setting, and wait for the next speaker to take the stage and fill them with more knowledge as to how they're going to become really, 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 really super rich. <laughs> any questions about the assignment? Okay, any questions? I'll, I'm going to go through a couple examples on these sheets real quick so you can see how to fill those out as well. Okay, but any questions on instructions so far? Okay, so when Lee comes in this afternoon from corporate, he is going to also quiz us on how this exercise went. He's going to want to know who won and why you won. So we as a panel then are going to have to be able to defend that with him as well. Okay? But so that you guys now, before we go to break here, let's go through one of these sheets so you understand because each of you will be filling these out on each of your, each of your uh, files. I have a question. Yes. Each of you will have, each of your funds will have a particular amount available to you. We'll talk about that in a minute of how you get that, that money. Okay. And then you as a fund manager, you guys will have the opportunity to decide how much of that money you want to deploy. So you may have $20 million available to you in your group, but you as a group may decide you only want to try and deploy 10 of it. You're only going to owe me interest on 10, which also means you can't dip in anything beyond that okay we'll talk about that in a minute so yes you'll you will know clearly how much you'll you'll know clearly how much you have available okay so we'll, we'll go over that okay so each of you is going to fill out this loan summary sheet on each deal that you lend on so let's just say that we're going to do a single family home and we're going to do this deal right here this is deal number uh, 15-01 Dash Chicago. Okay, um, total number of units. There's one unit in here. Property value. It's worth 120. Amount of loan. Borrowers are only asking for 60,000. Is this a safe deal? Okay. Down payment from borrower. Zero. Now is this a safe deal? How did this become? How did this become that they are putting zero down, but it's worth 120? They're buying it at a discount, right? This is the type of deals we're looking for. Okay, do we get these deals? All the time. We get deals this good all the time. Okay, okay. Uh, source of the borrower down payment. Well, in this case, there's not one, right? Not applicable. Loan to value. What is this? This is 50%, right? Length of loan. We're going to write this loan for six months. We're going to charge, because it's because it's Chicago and there's lack of cheap money in Chicago. In this case, let's say we're going to charge 8%, we're going to charge 8 points. And loan origination dollars earned, what is that? If we charged 8 points on 60,000, how much did we earn in loan origination dollars? 4800 dollars. You see where we came up with that? Somebody put in You guys know how to do percentages on your calculators, on your phones? Can you see that screen? I meant calculator, not phone. 
Okay, so $60,000, 8% is 0 0.08, okay? So all we do is 60,000 times 0 0.08 gives us 4,800. Can you see that? Okay, $4,800, okay? Annualized interest rate charge. We kind, of, we kind of stuck it to these guys on the points, didn't we? Yeah. Let's be nice on interest rate. Let's only charge 10% on the interest rate. So how much is the total annualized yield on this deal? We charged eight points for six months. So we got eight twice, right? That's 16 plus 10% annual interest. So we got a 26% annualized. Did you guys follow that? If you didn't follow that, ask me now, because I guarantee you when you come up here and do your presentations, there's going to be a bunch of you that miss it. Okay, this was a, look right here, this is a six-month loan, correct? We charged eight points origination fee. How many times in 12 months are we going to get that? Twice, Twice because six is, six is half of 12, right? We're going to get that two times, so that's 16. And then 10% annualized interest rate. How many times are we going to get 10% in a year? Once. Only once. Okay, so we got, we got 8 twice for 16. We're only getting 10 once. 16 plus 10 is 26. Yes? We're just, we're just saying this same exact money is going to be... A, for the exercise, for purpose of this exercise, this same exact money is going to be deployed at the same exact rate and fees twice. Doesn't matter. Just the same money and same terms. Okay. You're only going to, you're only going to, so if you have $10 million available to you and you write it all for six months, we're just going to plan on that you deploy it at the exact same rate and terms for the second six months of the year as well. Okay, makes sense. So you're figuring everything based off of sin, single loan on annual on annual return. Okay. Yes. yes. What do you have uh, on the down payment from borrower? On the down payment from borrower? Zero. Oh, zero. zero. So he put so he put zero down. Can we as Kogo Capital fund this loan? Yes. Yes. Within our guidelines, how many of you understand our guidelines? You guys can set whatever guidelines you want within your funds today. Our fund, our guidelines are, it has to be 65% of value. Is this deal 65% of value? Yeah. Even though the borrower put zero money down? Yeah. Yes. So that fits within our guidelines. Some funds, it doesn't matter how good of a deal it is, you have to have 20% skin in the game out of your pocket, no matter what, no ifs, ands, or buts. Okay. And if we're lending to an unknown borrower, an uncredible borrower that we have never done any business or interaction with, that's also our guideline. But for people who have worked with us and that we know and that we trust, we will do, we will do zero money out of pocket. It still has to be 65% of value. Okay. Uh, next line, total income from this loan. Again, we're going to figure that this is annual. So what, this loan, what is this loan going to give us annually? Well, we got 60, it's a $60,000 loan that's giving us a 20%, 26% yield, right? So if we've got a, a 60,000 times 0.26 for 26 annual yield, we're going to make 15,600 off of this one loan. Now, is that realistic? We charge pretty high points on that loan. In Chicago, how many of you were from Chicago again? Raise your hands. Have you found cheaper money than this in Chicago? That's cheap money in Chicago, isn't it? Well, yeah. Now, in my market, in Salt Lake City, I, would, I wouldn't even think twice about this. I'd tell that guy to stick it. Okay? In California, even more so. Coastal California, money's cheap. But in Chicago, this is cheap money. Okay? So you, you, need, to lo you need to know a little bit about your locations, too. Yes? Yeah, this is, can we agree for, can we agree this is still a high risk loan? Why is this a high risk loan? This guy has zero skin in the game. He could walk away and what does he lose? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. 
Okay? What if he decides what if he decides that the asset wasn't worth anything? He's lost nothing. He's he's lost no no money. Okay? Okay, last question. Percentage of available funds for this loan. Now, we don't know that because we didn't determine. This fund, this whoever's doing this worksheet, we're going to say that you have 15 million dollars available to you. Okay? So if you've got 15 million available to you, and you lent 60,000 on this deal, 60,000 divided by 15 million, you deployed 0 0.004, four tenths of a percent. Okay, so this is 0.4 percent. You follow that? Okay. If you had, if you as a fund manager, if you've got a total of $15 million to deploy, and you, and you choose that you're going to lend on this loan, and you lend $60,000 on this loan, 60000 is what percentage of your total amount to deploy? It's 0.4%. Am I wrong? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> no, that's, that is 0.4%. 1% of 15 million would be 150,000. And we've deployed 0.4%. We've deployed less than a half a percent of our total available funds on this one deal. So in other words, how many deals like this do we have to do in order to deploy 15 million? Yeah, we've got to do over 200 deals exactly like this in order to deploy $15 million. So that's the balance that you've got to think about as you're deciding how much money you're going to have available to yourselves. Okay, This is just one example. You're going to see files up here from tens of millions of dollars to millions to under $10,000. Okay, And you're going to get to decide which of those you fund on and which of those you don't. Okay, One more question on this, Anthony. Go ahead. No, that is as is value. Okay, as is. That is as is value. So his question was, his question is, this 120 is, what is this? So we lend on, we lend based on what is the property worth today. We also have loans available to inner circle members only. We have loans available to inner circle members only where we will lend based on the ARV. In other words, if this property was only worth $60,000 today, but it's going to be worth $120,000, could we lend on this deal? The answer is yes. Okay? The, the answer is yes, we could do that. Because it's, because it's, still, it's still only at 50%. If, if that's not, that's is not the ARV, how do I know what the as-is value of it if that's not the ARV? That's what you're determining. As is, is today. The condition the property is in today. Do you know what ARV is? ARV is after repair value. So how do I know the as is? How do I calculate that, come up with that figure? That's this number right here. That's what we have, and that's what your files will have. I mean, I understand that's what that is. How did I come up with 120 if that's not the ARV? Because that's what it's worth. It's not, that is not a number you pull out of the air. That is a number that you're going to find in the file either through appraisal. How do we find it out? In the file. How, how do we find it out? We do an appraisal on the property. Okay? Now, if you come to me and you say, I want to borrow $120,000 on this house and it's worth three hundred, dollars am I, am I just going to say, hey, yeah, we spent four days together in Dallas and I really like you. Here's the check. No, I'm going to do an appraisal. No offense to you. I like you. But I'm going to do an appraisal. Mike's over here. When we're doing these uh, evaluations on these files, are we going to add in the closing costs? I mean, there might be an extra thousand, two thousand. The closing dollars. costs were right here. Eight points. Besides the points, I mean, there's obviously oh, going to be the. No, other for this exercise, no, we're not going to we're okay, not going to go down to dollars and cents. No. I don't know if we're going to have like another extra fifteen hundred, two thousand, five thousand. We're just going to figure that's all rolled into this eight 
eight points. Okay. It's all just part of the eight points, yes. Okay. I have a question. One more question, then how we're moving we are, on. How are we going to know what is the cost for repair? Uh, it'll be in the file. And if it's not, refer to rule number, you can't say, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay, moving on. Um, we'll, we'll be coming around during the exercise and answering additional questions. You'll have more questions, okay? So don't think that you're going to have everything answered right now. Uh, moving on. So this loan summary sheet you're going to do on every single file. Every single file that you decide that we're lending for you on, you're filling this out. We only have a couple of sheets in our book. I, we're well, so each of you only has a few of these sheets in your book, but there's going to be a, uh, there's going to be a number of you on your team. So all of you will bring all of your sheets to the table. There will be enough. There will be enough. And if there's not, we'll make additional copies. Okay. We'll, we'll, you'll, you won't run out. Okay. So this is a loan summary sheet per deal. This sheet, you're only going to fill out once for the group. Okay. This sheet, you only need once for the whole group. So group number, we'll assign you your group number. Group name, you'll come up with group name. And you're going to write all of the executives, all of your names under here on the executives, okay? Total amount to deploy. Well, let's just say that, Francis, you got really aggressive with your group and you said, we're going to deploy $30 million, okay? And total amount deployed. Well, your group completely and totally bombs, Francis, and you guys only deploy $1 million. <laughs> total number of loans. You did that over 30 loans. I don't know what that dollar per loan is, but it's pretty, pretty cheap, right? Which means we got to figure that out, though. So if we, did, if we did $1 million divided over 30 loans, that's only $33,000 per loan. $33,333 per loan. You guys follow me? Okay. Total earned and loan origination. Let's just say that uh, we earned 100,000 bucks. So we charge 10 points on every one of those. And total, total earned, in, earned in interest. Let's say we earned 150,000. Man, 150,000. So we charged 15% on each deal. Do you follow me? Okay. Total dollars earned was 250, right? Total yield. Now, this is where you're, some of you are going to get caught, so pay attention. Total yield, you earned $250,000 on the million dollars that you lent. However, you owe us money on $30 million. Okay? So your total yield, $250,000. Divided by 30 million, you earned a whopping eight tenths of a percent. You follow, do you see that? You earned 0.8 percent. 0.8 percent. Portion of the nine percent. Now you didn't even earn nine percent, right? So you're going to give us a hundred percent of that, plus you owe us a check. You follow me? So you're going to give us all 250,000 of that. Overage, there wasn't any. But if there was, that's where you would put the overage. Do you follow me? So if you would have earned, let's change this. So, so eliminate from your memory the stuff above. Let's say that your total yield, you, end up, you ended up earning a 14 total yield on $30 million. Okay? So if you had a 14 total yield on $30 million, $30 million, times 0.14, you made 4,200,000. So, oh, I should have done that different. Okay, 9%, so 9% of the 30 million would go there. Portion overage, so that's where you're gonna have 5% overage. Do you follow me? Because you, you owe us nine, you made 14, there's five of overage. So overage yields is 5%. Additional revenue earned by fund is half of that. So 2.5% times 30 million. Two, 30 million times 0 0.025. You earned an additional 
750. We earned our 750 plus our 9%, whatever that equals out to, and then individual per person on your team. So if you had 10 people on your team, then you had, so you had 10 members up here, that means each of you earned $75,000. Does that make sense? Okay, if I have sufficiently confused you, that's good. There's going to be some confusion. Just be aware of that. That's part of this exercise. So there is going to be some confusion. Um, with that, how do you get your money to deploy? Can we all agree from our discussion already this morning that it would be a good thing for you to be ambassadors for our company and go out and let people know that you have access to funds? Do you guys all know you can get paid for bringing people to borrow our money? Yes. Okay, so we want you to be advocates for our company and let people know that you're part of us because that's the way we view you. Here's how you get your money for your fund. For every, we're going to break it here in a minute. We're going to divide your tables or we're going to move your tables into teams. When you come back in, you're going to sit down at a table with a new team. So you two aren't going to be sitting next to each other. You two aren't going to be sitting next to each other. You three aren't going to be sitting next to each other, okay? You're going to come sit with your team. For every piece of swag on your team at your table, you get awarded a million dollars, okay? By swag, we've got pad folios in the back, we've got t-shirts, we've got golf jackets, we've got, I don't even know what all we have. They'll take care of you back in the back. Every piece of swag that you have, ball caps, you will get awarded a million dollars for your team to deploy, okay? Does that make sense? So, each piece of swag, gives you a million dollars. Now, if you come back, Francis, and you have $30 million on your team, you don't have to accept all $30 million, okay? Because you've got to have that balance there as well. Does that all make sense? Okay, so we are going to break. We're going to break for 15 minutes. That's going to give you ample time to get your swag. It's going to give us ample time to get tables rearranged. When you come back in, once you have your swag, we're going to have numbers that you're going to draw out of a basket. That will, give you your, that will give you your team number assignment. You'll find the corresponding table with a tent with a number on it. You'll sit at that table, which means the room is going to be completely different 15 minutes from now than what it is right now. So pack your stuff, carry it with you, get your swag, use the potty, and then, we'll, we'll, and then as you come back in, sit at your table with your new group. Any questions? 15 minutes.